Hello, my name is Josh Cohen, and I'm on the Outpost team here at AWS. In this video, we're going to talk about what happens after your Outpost has been activated. You've placed your order, you've waited for the delivery, the installation has happened, the Outpost is activated, now what? The first thing you'll do is navigate to the AWS Management Console. From here, we can go to the AWS Outpost Service and make sure that your Outpost is in fact activated. So when you go to the Outpost service, you should see one or more Outpost IDs here. If you don't, double check the region that you're in. The region that you're in corresponds directly to where you place the Outpost order from. So if you place an order for an Outpost from US East 1, it's only going to show up in US East 1. It won't show up in US West 2. In this case, we're in US West 2. Clicking on the Outpost, you'll see a summary page. And the important part here is under the status, will show active. If it doesn't show active, that means your outpost isn't yet fully activated. It will likely say pending. This will tell you whether you're ready to consume capacity on your outpost or not. In this case, ours is active and, and we can move forward. This page has some other detail. You can see your available EC2, S3, and EBS capacity, uh, whether your connection back to the region uh, is healthy and up. So the first thing we need to do before we can start actually deploying resources or EC2 instances, RDS instances onto the outpost is we need a subnet. So from this view, we can click actions and say, create subnet. Now there are two ways you can create subnets on outpost. One is the way that we just, that we're doing now. The other is through the AWS CLI. When you create an outpost subnet from the outpost console, You'll see it brings up the create subnet dialog with the outpost ID already selected. You can't change it. From here, you'll select a VPC. We have a VPC already created. If you don't have one, you'll create one. And then everything else is, is the same. You know, if you've created a subnet before in AWS, it's, there's no difference here. So I'll name it outpost subnet. Your availability zone is going to automatically be selected for you based off the availability zone that your outpost is tied to. So you're not able to change that. You'll enter a CIDR, whatever you want it to be. I'll use a slash 24 in this case, and then create. There's an there was an option down there. If you want to create multiple subnets in that dialog, you can. Uh, for our purposes, we just need one. Okay, we have a subnet now. Let's go ahead and uh, launch an EC2 instance onto that subnet. So you can go to the EC2 management console and create an instance uh, or launch an instance the same way that you've been doing. You can do it through the CLI. The third option is you can go back to the outpost console and there's a launch instance button here that you can click. Uh, this will launch the EC2 management console just like you're used to seeing. You select your AMI that you want to use. And then it filters the instance types that you have on the outpost. Because you, you, you launched this dialog from the outpost console, it will automatically filter out any instance types and sizes that are not on your outpost. You can see here I have a mix of R5, M5, I3EN, G4DN. We'll use an M5 extra large. We'll configure the instance details. You select your VPC, in this case, I only have one. You'd select a subnet, in this case, I only have one. We use the, the default, we don't need a public IP for this. You can certainly change that. Storage, we're gonna leave this as the default. Tags, let's go ahead and add a tag. Name. Security group, I have an existing security group with, with SSH and ICMP enabled. and then we'll launch it. I already have a private key. I'll choose that and I'll launch the instance. So we can go back and take a look at this. It's in a pending state right now. The, the states should be familiar. It'll go from pending to initializing um, and eventually running. And the status checks the, the, the same thing, right? We'll see initializing and then the, the different checks will, will go through and then show as passed. While we wait for that, you can look here and all the details for the instance is the same as if this instance were in the region. The difference is, is we launched it on a subnet that lives on the outpost. And by way of doing that, that 
that tells the control plane to launch the instance on the outpost and not in the region. One way you can check to see, you know, is my instance on an outpost, is it not? This view doesn't really give you a whole lot. I mean, you can see here the VPC is, has a friendly name of outpost VPC. The subnet name has a friendly name of outpost subnet. So logically that would tell me that the outpost or the instance is running on the outpost. But if you wanna be 100% sure, if you go to networking, you can come down here in this field called outpost ID. And th this, this exists for all instances. If the instance is not on the outpost but running in the region, this will just be blank. If you come into this networking tab and you see an outpost ID in the outpost ID field, that means the outpost is in fact, or the instance is in fact running on the outpost. This is still initializing, but we have a private IP here, 172.31.170. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH into an instance that I have on premises. So the other side of what we call the local gateway. And then see if we have connectivity from the instance that I have on premises to the instance that is on the outpost. Okay, so my ping is failing. So that means we don't have connectivity. And that's because there are certain steps that you have to do before you can have reachability from the outpost to your local network. I know this still says initializing. Even once it's complete, it's still not going to work. There's a few things we need to do. If we go back to the outpost console, uh, we have the concept of a local gateway. I won't go into what a local gateway is here. Uh, we have a lot of documentation on the Outpost Services page. There's an Outpost User Guide that walks you through what the local gateway is. But essentially, it allows you to communicate from the Outpost over to your local network. So my local gateway has a route table. And the first thing we have to do in order to get communication flowing from the Outpost into your, your data center on premises is associate what VPC do I want to be able to allow communication to. In this case, I only have one VPC. Um, if you have multiple VPCs, you can associate multiple VPCs, but without this, you have no way of, of specifying your routing to, to guide things over to the local network. So I've done that. Now the next step is I have to create a custom route table. And that's because subnets can exist in the region and on the outpost within the same VPC. And because of that, we don't want people to, to maybe accidentally put in a route in the main VPC route table that has some side, or maybe even it's, it's the default route of 0.0.0.0.0 over to the local gateway. And if you do that in the main VPC route table and you have instances in the region on a regional subnet within that same VPC, you're going to get essentially black hole uh, if those were trying to go to whatever that route is where the next top is the local gateway. So because of this, we don't allow the next top of a local gateway to be inside of the main VPC route table. So we'll create a, a custom route table for our outpost subnet. And we'll select this VPC. Now that we have a custom route table, the next step, we have to associate it with the subnet or subnets. If you have multiple outpost subnets, you can have multiple outpost subnets within a, a VPC. And then let's add some routes. So the few, a few routes we need, if, if you needed a, a, a quad zero to go out to the, an internet gateway, you can do that. But then you also need to know what is what ciders do you want to communicate with on premises. In our case, the, the cider that we want to be able to communicate with on premises is 10.11.57.0/24, and we want the next hop to be the local gateway. Now you may have noticed that the the machine that I SSH'd into earlier was uh, a three dot address. That's the public address. The private CIDR for that network is this 10.11.57.0/24. We'll save changes here. Now we have a route that goes from our outpost networking over to the on-premises networking using the local gateway. Let's check back and see if our instance is finished initializing. Okay, so it's initialized. Two out of two checks have passed. Let's go back and see now that the instance is fully up, 
now that we've added the routing and the route table properly to reach that CIDR over the local gateway, let's see if we can ping. And we can't. The reason for this is there's one more step that needs to be completed prior to, to this functioning. So we have something called a customer owned IP, and this is very similar if you're familiar with how we do things in region to an elastic IP. So in order for traffic to go from the outpost over the local gateway to the on-premises network, any instance that you want to have that communication needs to have what we call a customer owned IP. And this is information that you gave us during the, the site validation and prior to us installing and activating your outpost. So the last step here is to assign a customer owned IP to this EC2 instance. We can do that by, so from the EC2 management console, we can go to elastic IPs and we can allocate an elastic IP address. You may be used to doing this in the region and you would typically choose an Amazon pool for a public IP. We're gonna use a customer owned IP address pool. This should already be here. This will be from information, again, that you provided us during uh, or prior to the install and activation. And here you can see this is the range. So this is the range that your on-premises network will see whenever you're communicating from a resource on the outpost. It's not gonna see the VPC IP of that 172.31 address. It's going to see this range. So when you allocate this, it's going to allocate a random address from this 198.19.6.0 slash 24 CIDR. If you want a specific IP address from this range so that you can associate it with a specific EC2 instance, you can do that, but you have to do it through the CLI. So we'll allocate the IP, and then the last step is to assign that to the EC2 instance. So under Actions, we can associate an elastic IP. We can choose an instance. Uh, you can choose whether to associate it with the network interface or the instance. We're just gonna do the instance and then click Associate. Now we can go back to the EC2 instance view. And if you have the, the outpost-EC2 instance selected here in this case, there are a few ways you can see this. If, you, if you're in the networking view like we are here, you can go down to Elastic IP Addresses, and you'll see that we now have one of that 198.19.6.133. If you go to Details, you can also see it listed here under Elastic IP Address. If you're not seeing this after you've done the association, you'll probably need to refresh your screen. Now, if I go back to my instance that I have running on premises, I'm still not gonna be able to ping this 172.31.1.70. That's because this is the VPC IP address for that instance. That address and that CIDR isn't exposed to the on-premises network. What is exposed is that customer-owned IP pool you have for your outpost. We copied this address here, so this 198.19.6.133. So if we try to ping that, we should get a reply. We're getting a reply here. This means that the communication between the outposts and your on-premises networking has been established, the routing is working as, as it should, and, and everything uh, is copacetic. You can see here my, my round trip time is very, very large <laughs> relative to a data center and in the outpost being in the same place. In this case, uh, what we're doing is the on-premises portion of, of this is, is quite far away. Um, in every other scenario, in a real world scenario, your on-premises network and the outpost are co-located and that round trip time is going to be one millisecond or, or less or sub millisecond. In summary, we checked to see the status of the outpost and to make sure that it was in an active state. We walked through creating a subnet on the outpost as well as launching an EC2 instance on the outpost. And then we made sure we had connectivity from our outpost to our on-premises network through the local gateway as well as testing to make sure it was functioning correctly. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.